you. Good morning. As we open the 10th, the 10th annual mental health conference here in Charleston. So welcome to Charleston. Welcome to the Charleston. Did anybody get up and dance? It's a dance too, you know. So by the way, just uh, I think an interesting fact, that song was written in 1923 for a Broadway show by an African-American composer who was a Tin Pan Alley, that's what they call him, composer for Broadway tunes. And he had visited the, the, uh, a club up in Harlem and seen a band from Charleston called the Jenkins Orphanage Band, this uh, traveling band of kids from an orphanage here, uh, African-American kids. And James P. Johnson saw this band from Charleston, saw the kids dancing this wild dance, and it inspired him to write the Charleston, right? So um, what does all this have to do with your conference? I saw a few weeks ago the schedule, and there was a couple items on the schedule this afternoon at uh, 4.15, I think, uh, Stephen Page. You're going to be delighted to hear him play and, and, and chat with you. And originally there was a band on the schedule for tomorrow, and it, it, it current confirmed to me how important the arts how important music, how important uh, drawing and the arts in general can be to uh, our, our mental state. And um, I've got a little stressful job, I'll admit, and so I am very blessed to be able to do um, things like what I just did because some people, you know, to deal with stress, they got to go to the mountains or, or go to the Caribbean and kind of get away from it all and after a long day at City Hall, I can just go home and... Thank you. <laughs> Just kind of takes me away, what can I say? Um, by the way, that's a, a theme of Leonard Bernstein's called Some Other Time. And uh, it kind of takes me to another time and place when I play things like that. And um, I wanted to share one other story with you. I um, had the blessing of helping care for an elderly neighbor of mine who, I, it was clear to me she was coming down with a quote mental uh, issue and it in fact was the early stages of Alzheimer's. And isn't it um, scary, and it's why we're here today, that um, today 
in America, something like one in five, about 20 percent of folks are experiencing some, some form of mental, um, mental issue, and, and um, addiction is, is just on crazy with, with opioids and alcohol. L nearly one in 10 people in our country have some substance abuse issue, so there's so much so much work to be done, but, but another part of, of mental where, uh, wellness is, um, you know, maybe, maybe a medical, more of a medical uh, route is Alzheimer's and uh, dementia, but it manifests itself certainly as, as a mental illness, at least initially, right? And so anyway, um, I, I um, helped take care of her. I, I got, she didn't have any family. I got her placed in a, a, eventually a memory care unit of, of uh, assisted living. And um, I would go visit her and over time, you know, she would barely recognize me and um, couldn't remember more than the last few seconds of what had happened. And, and one day I went in and I played, I started playing the piano and I was playing um, Thank you. Somewhere in the back of her mind was the lyrics to that song. She stood up and she started singing Five Foot Two, Eyes of Blue, and she couldn't remember my name. And it just really made an impression on me as how deeply rooted and meaningful and universal music can be and the arts in general. So. Again, uh, I hope uh, you'll take this theme away from this year's conference and explore the possibilities of using the arts in our work with mental health. I'll leave you with a composition of my own called the Charleston City Rag. Thank you very much.